Hi Nate, welcome to our SQL interview. I'll give you a question and then you'll have a few minutes to solve it. Are you ready? The question here asks you to find the monthly retention rate of users for each account separately for December 2020 and January 2021. Retention rate is the percentage of active users an account retains over a given period of time. So, the data you are working with consists of only one table. In the table SF events there are three columns. The first one is date, which records the activity of the user, ID of the account the user belongs to and the user ID is the ID of the user itself. Okay, great. Thanks for the question. So let me rephrase the question to see, you know, if I, if I capture it correctly. What we're trying to find is the monthly retention rate for only December and January, right? So retention rate uh, is the percentage of active users an account retains over a given period of time. So essentially, what we are trying to find is um, an active user divided by all users or all active users, actually. Yes. And then, that's correct. okay. And then the nomin or the numerator seems like uh, an active user um, is defined as whether or not they've stayed with the app or have future activity in future months. Yeah. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. You're right. Active user in future months. All right. So we're trying to find that retention uh, rate and then kind of group that by account ID. And then the output should be a list of account IDs and the retention rate if we divide the January by December retention rates. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Okay, great. So just a few assumptions that I want to clarify. In the data set, we have date, account ID, and user ID. So I'm assuming that a user ID would be listed if they have an activity, like they log into the app or something like that, and the date would be logged as well. So it's really the, the date of activity for that user. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that would mean that if we were to find all users in December, it essentially just means that all of the users are active in December. So it's a list of active users in December. Is yeah. that right? Okay. That's true. And so my last question uh, is just about, you know, how to count users, just a confirmation on that. So if a user was active, say in December, we have a date for them and a, and a user ID uh, record for them but then they're not active in any future months. Like we don't see that a user record uh, in any future months past December, that user would not be retained for December. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, you're okay. right. And then another question, we only want to consider December and January. Is that right? Yeah, no, that is right. I think I have all the assumptions. Are there any other pieces of information that I'm missing? Well, you're not miss missing anything. I just want to clarify uh, that you, you ask about the active users. Uh, the point of this table is that uh, it captures only user activity. So it's not a list of users, they're active users. So we are interested in the cohort of users. Uh, using this table, we want to understand if the users that were active in a given month, how many of them were active in any future months. In other words, by definition, that's a retention rate for active users in December and in January. If you have any, any further questions, just ask, of course. Okay, perfect. Uh, that makes sense. So the, the users that we're seeing in the table, just to reiterate, are just active users. It's not a list of you know all users in that platform yeah. that have registered. Okay, so that's a very important distinction there to note. So I think I'm ready to break down the solution. This will be, have to be a multi-step process. Um, so the first thing would, that I would want to do, because we're only considering December and January users, I will create uh, a CTE that uh, captures only users in December, and then I'll create another CTE that captures users in January. So the first two steps is to capture users uh, in December, 
and then capture users in January. So what I'll do is I'll create, you know, maybe two CTEs to, to be able to capture these users. And so once I have an understanding of the users in those specific months, what I'm going to care about next is the numerator for the retention rate, which is looking at users with activity in uh, future months. So what I can do in this table, because we have user ID and date, I can just uh, find the, the maximum, you know, latest activity a user has in the data set. So this will give me any future activity past December or past January to give an assessment uh, and an understanding of whether or not a user has future activity. And then the third step would be to find users' future activities, right? Because that's the numerator for the retention rate. So in order to do that, I can just find the maximum date in the data set and tie that to the user to see whether or not that user has an, a future activity past December or January. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. You're finding the, the highest date, so you're using it to because you only care for a future activity. So that's what you're interested in. Yep, absolutely. And then after that, um, I'll join the tables together, the December with, you know, the table with the future activities and then the January and the table with the future activities. This will give me a mapping essentially where you're, you're able to see, you know, all December users and their latest future activity. And I'll only count um, the users where the, the future activity was past December if they come from the, the uh, December table. So that way we have an understanding if user is retained. And so the last thing is uh, really just to tie everything together, calculate the retention rate by essentially the equation that the question gives us and then group by uh, the account ID. And that should give us the output of retention rate by account ID. Does that solution uh, work? Am I missing anything? Well, this sounds like a, like a good plan, good, good outlay of the solution. So I think you can start writing a code. So maybe by, by doing that, you will also see if you are missing something or maybe, maybe you should add. Okay. More. So select star from the table SF events. I'm going to use the extract function here um, to extract the month from our date field because I care about December. We're, we're looking at month of uh, 12. And then to get the year, I'm going to use the exact same thing. So I'm going to do an extract. Uh, it'll be year from date 2020. So this will give me a list of uh, users. So I want um, account ID and user ID uh, for December 2020. And I also want this to be unique. So I'm going to have a distinct clause here that will keep the account ID user ID unique. So we won't get a lot of duplicates. You'll, you'll probably find a lot of duplicates because um, the user could log in, could have multiple activity records in the given month. So this will just ensure that we just have one distinct account user pairing. All right, so that's for December. And then I'll create a, um, a CTE. I'll call this uh, December 2020. And then I want to do the same thing, but for January. So I'll actually just kind of copy and paste the, uh, the same code, but just change the month here to use one for January. And then we care about uh, the year 2021. So then um, again, same, same code as December, but I'm going to change, uh, name the CTE January, 2021. So we have um, written, these two steps right now. And the, the third thing I want to do in this solution is now find the future activities uh, for all of the users uh, in the data set. And so what I want to do is for every user, find the latest dates uh, of activity so I can leverage this uh, max function to do that. It'll just pick out the maximum latest date uh, for every user. And then I essentially just group by user ID there. So I'm going to also make this a CTE. I'll just call it max date. That would take care of uh, step number three up here. 
And so what I want to do now, uh, because I have a list of active users in December, active users in January, and then the latest date for every single user, what I want to do is join uh, essentially the max date with uh, both of the December and January uh, active users. So what that will give me in the end is um, an assessment of whether or not that, that user for December had future activities. So here's the retention rate for December. Um, essentially, I'm using the December CTE, and then I'm gonna join it to the max date CTE on user ID. So when I run this code, what this gives me is essentially a mapping of the user ID from December and the user ID from the max date CT, and then it'll give me the latest activity date. This is perfect for me to now calculate the retention rate. Okay, so in order to get the retention rate, I will first use a case statement where what I'm trying to evaluate is whether or not the user's latest activity date, the max date, is past or greater than December right? Because we only care about future dates. So essentially we will count all of the users with uh, their latest activity dates past December. This will give us the numerator, right? How many users have future activity and we'll divide it by the number of users essentially in, in this data set in December, 2020. So this now is the denominator. And what I can do also, because we are trying to find like a ratio, a number that is likely less than one, um, because we have a numerator and, the, and a denominator and you're dividing basically two ints. So I want to convert that into a decimal. So I will just essentially just multiply that by um, maybe a one, 1 1.0 to convert that into a decimal or a float. And then I'll call this whole thing retention for December. And of course we need the account ID there. So I'll have the account ID as the first uh, column. And because I have an account ID and a function, I will now have to group by account ID here. So this essentially takes care of my December retention rate calculation. And now I have to do the same thing for my January one. Okay, and so here is uh, the same thing, but for January, I just have uh, retention January 2021 using the January uh, table and then also still using the max date table. So that will give me the retention rate for January. I have everything I need now, and I believe we just have the final output uh, left, which is to calculate the retention rate and then group by account ID. Okay, so in order to get, to get the final output, what it said in the question was to divide the January retention rate with the December retention rate to get you know one retention rate and then to map that to an account ID. So what I've done is I have uh, joined the January retention rate with the December retention rate CTEs on account IDs. So I have a list of the account IDs and then uh, what I'll do is just divide the retention for January and divide that by the retention from December. And again, uh, what I can do is just in case I, for whatever reason, get integers, I can just make sure to multiply it by 1.0 so I get can get a float and a decimal as my output. Um, that's just kind of explicit. And then I will... Uh, name this retention. So Nate, I see you have an account ID in your uh, latest select statement. So it is, is this a January account ID or December? Okay, no, that's a great question. It doesn't actually matter because if I go back to the question, the question essentially says you can assume all accounts are present in December and January. So because of that assumption, it doesn't actually matter uh, whether or not I take the accounts from January or December. So what I'll do is I'll actually just take it from uh, January and that will work. So when I run this code, uh, what I get is essentially the account ID and then the overall retention rate, which is retention uh, for January divided by the retention for December. And so I'm getting a one, uh, which is equal to like 100%. 
Yeah, that's a that's a great solution and, and correct, by the way. So congratulations on that. But I want to ask you about uh, one uh, edge case. Let's imagine yeah. that not all accounts were present each month. So how would you compensate to include all those accounts? So what I'm hearing you say is that um, not all of the accounts may be actually captured in one month. So you could have a subset of accounts in December that's not in January and then vice versa. Some accounts are in January, but not in December, right? And so what you want to do is create a list of all accounts across both of these months. And you're asking how to do that. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So okay. the main thing is if, if, uh, the accounts are not present in continuous months. So present in one month, then missing, and then again, they appear. So how would you yeah. compensate for that? Yeah, absolutely. I, there are two ways to do that, uh, that I can think of. One is using a full outer join. Uh, what that will do when you do a full outer join is even if the account is in December, but not found in January, um, you will still preserve that account uh, in the final output and then vice versa also. It, it basically will keep track of all of the accounts found in both months. So I would do a full outer join um, what the code could look like. So one solution could be to use a full outer join like I have right here, where we are joining the January retention with the December retention. That has the account IDs in there. And if I'm doing a full outer join, I'm essentially preserving all of uh, the count IDs in the final output. That's essentially what a full outer join does. Um, it could get pretty expensive computationally because you are you know, preserving all of the data. Um, and if it's a really big data set, then it, it could take up a lot of memory and it could take up a lot of compute time. So the second implementation is a two-step process. Uh, it's to create a CTE where we're unioning all of the accounts from January and then uh, with December. So it gives us essentially all of the accounts. And this is what I have right here. I'm basically just performing a union. It'll preserve all of the account IDs for me. And then what I'm going to do is use that as sort of the, uh, the master you know, data set template in my left join clause. And I'll left join the accounts I find in December and then left join the accounts I find in January. And so that will allow me to have essentially a list of all of the account IDs, all of the retention and account IDs for January and all of the retention and account IDs for December. And I just map that all uh, and I'm able to get the retention rate from there. It's a little bit quicker because you know, you're not performing a, a join, um, a full outer join specifically, uh, but this, will help you know if you don't want to perform a full outer join because the data set is so large uh, this could be uh, slightly faster oh uh, well that's a that's a great answer nate i especially like this uh, this union idea but um there is there is a downside to all those actually to both those uh solutions is that they capture uh, only december and january so what if we wanted to capture all months not only january and December, like this question asks. Yeah, no, that's a great question. You know, I think if we were, if we wanted to capture all months uh, for for basically all the account IDs, we, we wouldn't really want to use a full outer join. We could still use this concept of have, you know, doing a union to get all of the months, but it's probably simpler just to create like a temporary table that just, stores all of the account IDs that are found in this data set. And then what I can do after that is just left join them to my retention tables uh, for specific months that I'm interested in. Uh, but essentially this all accounts um, table here would basically just be um, all distinct accounts from the SF uh, events table. Thank you again. Uh, I think you answered all my questions and, and you did it in a, in a great fashion. So thank you again and keep you in a, see you in, a, in the next round. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.